Welcome back, everybody. I have a very special guest on my channel here today, Mr. Mark Kohler, attorney at law. And Mark, you've been an owner of your practice for how long now, KKOS, would you say? Whew, uh, 25 years, approximately. Yep. I know. I look like I'm 25, but it's 40% off. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, let's turn that off. Thank you, Z. Uh, you said 25 years you've been the owner of your practice and you're only 30 years old, so you've been doing this since you were five? Yes. How did you did the math that quick? Wow. Well, thank you. That's what the ladies say, you know, but I, anyway, <laughs> thanks for having me, Carlton people. This is going to be a great broadcast. This is so important. I'm so grateful to be here. I couldn't imagine any other person that I would want to talk about the corporate transparency act other than you, Mark. So first off, give people a little, no bit one of else will talk to you about it. That's why <laughs> I'm your only choice. <laughs> it seems like there's no information out online about this. Yes. Yeah. I Crazy. think you and I are the only two people that have actually covered this topic. So what I want to do today, Mark, is I want to give people an overview of what the Corporate Transparency Act is and, you know, how this might impact the everyday business owner and if there's anything that we can really do to kind of get around this, if anything at all. So yeah. maybe we can take it from the top. Um, okay. Can we kind of jump into why the Corporate Transparency Act was created? What is the intention behind yeah. it? Yeah, and, and I want to get everybody, I'm going to say this if I could initially, I want to get everybody's attention. This impacts all of you. There's no getting around this. If you're a small business owner with an LLC or a corp in America, this is going to impact you, literally. So just, I'm, I can't emphasize that enough. So now, why did this happen? Three years ago, the Republicans and Democrats got together, sick and tired of human traffickers, drug dealers, money launderers, terrorists that are hiding and playing games with LLCs in America. They do. Any of you that have been scammed, a family member of yours, yourself, and you look up the LLC within five minutes, they've closed it, moved on, gone, whatever. This is not the government trying to be a big brother. This is not the government screwing you over. These are all the criminals that have made it hard on all of us as now legitimate business owners because we have to do a report. Now, it's not the end of the world, but we have to report to the federal government starting January 1st information to help them ferret out all these criminals out there that have been using entities in the wrong way. That's why it's here. They said three years ago, it's coming January 1st, 24. Yeah. No one listened. No one listened. And how do like help us understand this? How do people use entities illegally? How could you set up an LLC and do illegal conduct inside of an LLC or a corporation for those that don't know? Well, uh, you know, Carl and I, and, you know, I, of course, in our law firm, we do a lot more asset protection than tax planning. Carlton's more tax planning oriented, but he's always working with people with entities. We love privacy. I want privacy. I don't want people to know what real estate I own and, and my home address, and I can hide you in the public eye. Yep. That's cool. Well, the criminals have used that and gone next level because the federal government has the same problem. They can't figure out who owns an entity that quick before yep. they've skipped town. And so now this new law says, if you don't report this to the federal government, we're going to give everybody the timelines, what to do. I have a service that's going to take care of you. If you want it, you can do it yourself. But if you don't report to the federal government, and we'll give you the rules here in a minute, the information they need to know who's owns your company and controls it, $500 a day penalty or two years in jail. That's it. There's no getting around this. Yeah, guys, this is, this is really serious. And Really, Mark, it's an anti-money laundering law. So mm. apparently there's been a lot of entities, business owners out there that were setting up these shell companies, laundering money through them. Maybe you guys yeah. have heard of some people that have gotten scammed, maybe through crypto projects, NFT projects. I know a lot of investors who've lost out on a lot of money. And now FinCEN is cracking down on all illegal activities, and they want to know who owns these entities. So Mark, for those who are out there that don't really know what FinCEN is, maybe you can describe that to people. Yeah, let me just say this. Come January 1st, there's a new sheriff in town, and it ain't Wyatt Earp. It is FinCEN. And the FinCEN is short for the Financial Crimes Investigative Enforcement. And this, in, in, for, sorry, Enforcement Network. Financial Crimes Enforcement Network, FinCEN. It is part of the Treasury Department. Same thing the IRS is under. And the government has said, Treasury Department, we need you to compare notes with the IRS and all these states where people are setting up LLCs and corporations and LLPs and LPs and all, any entity created. A trust don't count. We'll come back to that. Any entity created at a state level and you got an EAN at the IRS, you now have to report to FinCEN 
this federal agency, and it's private, it's a federal agency. I can't call FinCEN and get your info. So I can still provide a lot of privacy to clients in regarding the public image that they have in their assets. But the feds, they already know who you are. If you're a legitimate citizen, they already know you. But we're just trying to ferret out the LLCs who we don't know. That's what the feds are after. Okay, so the feds are after higher levels of transparency around entities. And one of the ways that many business owners will kind of fly underneath the radar is setting up entities in states that don't require managers' names and information to be provided online. But the yeah. downside is, is with the Corporate Transparency Act, at least what we're learning, is that there is a government agency that will be able to uncover exactly who has set up those entities when they were set up and will now require you to report your legal information to them. Mark, is this on a yearly basis or is this something you only do once? <laughs> Both. Okay. So let's talk about, cause there's kind of two group. There's really three groups. This is very interesting, Carlton. There's some of you that set up an entity before 2020 that is inactive. It's just sitting there. You're not doing anything with it. We'll come back to that. We want you to get rid of it because it, if you're not using it, it's time to clean house. It's time to clean house. This is a good thing because a lot of people have got a lot of crap laying around in LLCs they don't need. So we'll come back to that. You set up an entity before COVID and you haven't really used it. We want to get rid of it. It's called the inactive exception. There's 23 exceptions. This is a this is a pretty good one for small business owners. There aren't many others. Next, or any of you that have an LLC in America, and Carlton, you've said it here too. 45 million LLCs in America. Okay, yeah. small business owners, disregarded entity, 100 owned by your S corp, 100 owned by you. Your trust does not matter. If you have an LLC right now. Come January, for, and then we're going to talk about new ones set up in the future. So those are the three groups you set up before 2020 currently have one, or you're going to set one up starting January 1st, moving on. There's going to be three different rules. Okay. So if you have an entity now, that's the bulk of us. You have an entity now. Starting January 1st, you have to do this initial report. It's called a BOI, Business Owner Information Report. It's going to be digital. If Benson has not revealed the, uh, the, 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 the portal yet, that will come live January 1st. And on this report, you have to disclose the company name, the company address, and, and in, okay, number two, the owners that own 25% or more or are a manager. And wow. that includes their social security number, driver's license, passport, and home address. Ooh. And then if you pay someone to do it, like you say, hey, Mark, I want your company to do it for me. Some yeah. accountants out there are like, okay, I'll just do it for my clients. Okay. Anybody that reports that BOI has to disclose their home address, their social and passport, and their name. So cool. you just can't. And if a lawyer does it, their paralegal has to do it too. So anybody in the office that helps do this for a client has to report their personal info. You can imagine the talks I'm having with my staff here at the office, what we're going to do. Yeah. So, so this report goes off. Now you may think, okay, I'm done. And if you don't do it by the end of next year, 500 a day, two years in prison, $10,000 penalty. So it's a big hammer if you don't do it. Now right. here's the catch though. If your address changes in your business, the there's a 25% or more ownership change in your business, or your personal home address changes for the rest of your life as a business owner, Yeah, you have to report within 90 days to FinCEN that your address changed, the ownership changed, the manager changed, any of those changes. If you don't report within 90 days, 500 a day, two years in jail. Two years in jail. Wow. I hope it doesn't come down to that. For many of you guys that are watching, this is why this is extremely serious. Now, Mark, is there a cap on how much they can charge you? So let's just say you you didn't know about the Corporate Transparency Act. You're uneducated. You're a new business owner. You set up an LLC. They didn't. You went to LegalZoom, one of these online <laughs> places. You found out through LegalZoom that your LLC was set up overnight, and you just have all this random paperwork at home. None of it tells you to report to the BOI or to FinCEN and you get past the 90 day period or maybe even six months into the year, is there a cap on how much that $500 stacks up or does it just keep r racking up? Right now, our understanding is it continues to rack, rack up. Now, and everybody, let me be clear too. We're gonna start reporting for clients that wanna sign up. I'll tell you what we're doing to help clients and uh, starting January 1st. But you have everybody out there, you have until the end of next year. So let's use an example here. You have until the end of next year to dissolve your entity, clean house, or report. 
So let's say you, you've got four LLCs. You're like, eh, I'm going to get this, rid of this one. I don't need it. You report on the other three. One of them's your S corp or something like that. You report all three. You're clean. Let's say you forget one that you didn't know. Oh my gosh, I set that up in Tennessee three years ago and I forgot about it. Come January 1st of 2025. So a year from now that FinCEN is going to compare notes with the IRS and the States and send out letters to everybody that has not reported and go, you got a 30 day grace period. You got 30 days to come clean. Okay. So you, and then that's our grace period. But right now, after that 30 days, you're going to, I suspect there's going to be some negotiating and cutting deals and all that, but it starts to add up. And I, we don't know how hard they're going to go at people for this. It, it's, it's going to be crazy. So let's get this straight. If I have an LLC, a partnership LLC, an S corporation or a C corporation, this impacts me. But what if I'm somebody that's a sole proprietorship? What if I'm a general partnership or maybe I'm operating just inside of a trust? How does this impact me if I'm in that category? Not at all. Mm, okay. If you don't have it. So let's say, so what's the converse? I'm going to throw caution to the wind. <laughs> I'm going to do a GP or a sole prop, have no asset protection. Dumb, right? Or I might do it in my trust. Not a good move. But let's say I do. You don't report. It's only entities registered with the state. LPs, LLCs, Inks, LLPs, all those little entities. So you file with the state. Yeah. And and that person out there that's probably thinking, well, okay, well then I'll just operate inside of GPs or operate inside of my trust. What's the downside, Mark? I mean, me and you could talk about this for days, but just real yeah. quick. What yeah. is the downside for these taxpayers who are just trying to operate inside of trust or just trying to operate inside of GPs or sole proprietorships? Well, the, the first issue, everybody, is that unlimited liability. The reason why we set up LLCs and corps in the first place, people, is right. We don't want to get sued from a customer, a tenant, a client, a, an employee, a, a slip and fall, whatever. So we have an entity for a reason. And by the way, I, I'll just, spoiler alert, we charge 200 bucks to maintain your entire, file your FinCEN, do your state filing, and maintain it. And if you have any changes, we'll take care of it for you. We've been doing this for 15 years. We have a company maintenance program that's been 150 bucks a year. We're going to raise it to 199. So we'll take care of this for clients that are just like, take care of me. So it's not the end of the world. You just have to own it and be ready for it. So, there, so I don't think it's going to be thousands and thousands of dollars. But if you say, well, I don't even want to pay that. I'm just going to go out and be a sole prop. Well, you got liability exposure. And then if you're creating a business revenue, and Carlton and I have talked about this for years, you've got the S Corp issue. So now I cannot get around FICA. So I'm going to be paying more tax as a sole proprietor or GP, probably, yeah. and have no asset protection. So people don't, that, the alternative is not get rid of everything. It's yeah. not real. Yeah. And for somebody out there that's listening right now, I don't think you would ever see me or Mark put out a video recommending a sole proprietorship or <laughs> a general partnership. I haven't created any videos around sole proprietorships or GPs for this exact reason. If I'm a tax strategist, a tax provider, my goal is to help you as a business owner, grow your business effectively and limit your risk. I know that if you have no LLC in place that you're completely exposed from a liability perspective. So we know that setting up LLCs are to the benefit of most self-employed business owners and taking it a step further to be a cor uh, S corporation if you've crossed over that threshold. But then now you're finding out about the Corporate Transparency Act and you're wondering, well, am I just gonna have to just sacrifice all of my information over to the government? Oh. And unfortunately, this is the, this is the next step uh, in being a business owner is being willing to be forthcoming with your information. So Mark, kind of talk us through some of the larger corporations that may not be exposed to this, or maybe uh, we can talk about yeah. maybe who gets to get around this. Yeah, and and and, and uh, I want to say one word on what you just said. People, it's not the end of the world from an ex from a privacy standpoint. The IRS already knows who you are. You're filing your tax return with your entities and your EIN and your social and your info and your home address. That's okay. The FinCEN is the sister to the IRS and their dad is the treasury department. You know, it's not the end of the world. The world isn't going to know this. So chill, but we just got, but we're going to help them. We're against criminals too. All of us are. We're, we're the, we, the people pass this law because we're sick of freaking criminals out there that, and we got to help ferret them out. Um, so uh, what was your other question? No, this, that, was actually, <laughs> that was actually perfect. So in other words, in other words, if I have a tenant that's sitting inside of my investment property and my investment property is held inside of an LLC, 
And this goes into effect January 1st, 2024. So I have to report to the BOI and to FinCEN or fill out my BOI and report my BOI to FinCEN. I know that this, this uh, agency has access to my information, but outsiders don't have access to no. this information. Is that correct, That's right. Mark? That's okay. correct. That's correct. So if my tenant got upset for whatever reason, slip and fell in my house, and now my tenant's looking online to try to figure out who owns the LLC, if my LLC is in a state where I have some anonymity, they may not be able to get access to that information. So they can't go from being online to then calling up FinCEN, a government agency, and say, hey, I slipped and fell. I want to have access to figure out who owns this LLC. That is not information that they're going to be able to request. Yeah, we're going to keep doing our our privacy planning and hiding and asset protection to keep us from the lawsuits out there that are reckless and unnecessary. So we're going to keep doing all that. Yeah, people, you're good. Um, yeah, any of you have called the IRS trying to get information on your own account? Holy hell. It's like, I got to get blood, you know, so it's not going to be easy for <laughs> or it's impossible for anyone that's not you to go to the feds uh, unless you're Timothy Oliphant and live, live and die hard. That was great. That was the third uh, one uh, in the series of a die hard that Timothy <laughs> Oliphant could get your info. He could, but, but that's just in the movies. So uh, anyway, big court. Okay. So now there's 23 exceptions. So yes. I remember what you asked. So there's 23 yeah. exceptions. 20. <laughs> They all benefit big business, not less little guys. Um, there's, there, but there's two exceptions I like. One is the inactive entity. Now, yes. here's the inactive entity. Let's unpack it. You set up your entity before January 1st, 2020. That's rule number one. And it has not had more than $1,000 go through the bank account in the last 12 months. So there's been no activity in 12 months. So you set it up almost four years ago. No activity in the last 12 months. You could have had activity two years ago, but you, it's just sitting around now. And that um, if it owns assets, that's considered activity. So you may say, well, it owns a piece of land, but there's no income. Doesn't matter if it owns real property or any asset or it's had a thousand dollars in activity, you cannot use that exemption. So either kill it or report. Okay. So what's the... I mean, what's the point of just having these entities just sitting out there, Mark? I mean, for many people, it's just piling up accounting fees. They still have to file the return possibly or do the statement of information, pay the filing fee. So if you have an entity floating out there and you plan on eventually using it, you're going to have to report this BOI report at some point in time if you want to have income flowing through that entity, correct? Yeah, yeah, you are. And so, um, and some of you are like, hey, I'd like having this LLC over there because I can go grab it if I need it. Now yeah. you're like, do I really want to, you know, now I got to maintain. And see, this is another important point. I think this is good for a lot of you business owners out there that you've been avoiding cleaning the house. You know, you've been avoiding taking care of your LLC. Your LLC should be doing annual minutes. Your LLC could be screwed up with the state and you don't even know it. Do you have an operating agreement? Do you have your board member certificates? Do you have, all, I mean, your shareholder certificates or member certificate? If you don't have all that stuff anyway, you really don't have an LLC. So let's get your crap together and do it right. And, and we have a whole service for that. We'll dissolve your entity. We'll do your BOI or we'll maintain it throughout the year. We, and it, keep it really affordable. We want business owners to like, keep it simple, but all right. The second exception, second yeah. exception, they call it the big company exception, but it's, it's I'm, to me, it's medium to small company in the big scheme of things. Right. If you have 20 employees or more, correct. Or, or 5 million in sales. Yep. Five, five million. million. That's the number. <laughs> yeah, that's the number. If you have five million sales or 20 employees or more, you can use that exception. Say, I don't have to report. The reason why they already know who you are. If yep. you're making five million, have 20 employees, they already know who you are. So you get out of it that way. But those are the only two. Everything else is big business, finance companies, nonprofits and crap like that. So 99% of us small business owners, we're going to be reporting. Yep. And guys, that's 5 million in gross receipts and that's 20 full-time employees. So if you have 20 full-time employees or 5 million in gross receipts, the government already knows who you are. But yes, that also puts you into the bucket of a large operating company um, that gets to get around reporting. Yeah. Uh, but they already know who you are. They also have uh, Mark 501c3s um, excluded yeah. from the CTA as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The nonprofits. Um, and there's some of you that have unique... Uh, business models where you've been reporting to the SEC, so finance companies, syndications, 
uh, other thing. Because if you're already on the Fed's radar, then they're like, we already know who you are. We're fine. You know, so uh, th that's some of the exceptions. But here's what I'm recommending to and to be really specific, um, Carlton. When you go to dissolve your entities you don't need, it's really a two step process. File articles of disillusion with the state. Just don't go, oh, I haven't, I'm not going to pay the state and they'll dissolve me. Sometimes the states don't. They just put you in an inactive status. Does that mean you're really dissolved? I don't want to go try to explain that to Finson at $500 a day. I'm, I'm going to just say, dissolve the damn thing, file it. We've got law firms, accountants, we're doing it for all of our clients. Just dissolve it actively, file the damn form. Sometimes in states it's free, sometimes you have to pay a little. Number two, at the same time, you're going to send a letter to the IRS and a terminate the EIN. You're going to say, we are now out of business. There's a letter you can send to the IRS. It goes to Cincinnati. All the accountants know how to do it. It's a simple letter. We're including it with disillusions for our clients. Yeah. We're going to send it out because you don't want Finson going to the IRS going, is it, give us all your active EINs and we're going to look at our reports. If there's an active EIN, you could get a letter. And now you got to explain, well, I dissolved at the state. <sighs> don't even get the letter. Kill it at IRS kill it at the state, walk away. For those that are out there wondering, okay, what if I have this entity, Mark, that was a single member LLC, I thought I was gonna do day trading, I thought I was gonna do e-commerce, but it's been sitting dormant for two or three years and I wanna dissolve it. If I'm in a state that has state filing fees for that LLC, do I have to pay those LLC state filing fees for each year that I didn't utilize it? Or am I able to dissolve that entity, shut it down and avoid the state filing fees? Ooh. Yeah, that's a great point. Because some states are like, oh, you want to dissolve your entity? Pay up for all these years you weren't paying your damn fees. Mm -hmm. um, wow. No, that's a great question. Every day I get another question. I'm like, ooh, you know. I'll, I'll throw one at you. Let, I, I don't know. I mean, you know, I think uh, some states are like, you. yeah, every state's a little different. Our Depends paralegals, we have state. a team of paralegals just taking care of that. Um, call your lawyer, call your accountant, call, you know, and have them file those that paperwork for you. But here's the other good one. Let's say I'm filing for you. You call me up and go, hey, Mark, I don't want to deal with it. File my LLC S Corp take care of my BOI. I'm like, all right, cool. You send over a couple hundred bucks and I get your info. We're going to do your state registration at the same time. So anybody that signs up with us, we're going to wait until your normal registration date with the state next year. It might be June, could be July. That's when we're going to do your fencing. We're going to do them at the same time. So let's say we take care of it. I got to report your company name, address, then yep. every owner of your entity, social security number, your, I got to get your driver's license, your passport, all that stuff, upload it. And third, because I did it for you. I'm the, I'm the providing applicant uh, individual. I have to disclose my home address, my social, my passport or driver's license. It's your form. Do I want my client seeing my home address? Mm -hmm. So we think what's going to happen right now, that's the way it works. With FinCEN, every entity and every person is going to give given a FinCEN identification number. I think this is going to be as important as your social security number and your EIN because that FinCEN identifier number goes with you, Carlton, or me or my entity for life until I right. kill the entity or I don't want to be a business owner. Because if I don't want to be a business owner, I don't have to report to FinCEN. But if my home address changes for the rest of my life, if I own an entity, I have to let FinCEN know. Got it. Yeah. Woo. And does this also count mark for series LLCs? We have some investors out there. They have series LLCs. Well, my, my take is the parent LLC, obviously. Yep. Um, uh, some States you have to register like Illinois. I got to pay a $50 filing fee to register the series. Other States, I can just set up series all day long and I don't have to let the state know. So in those States, where the series is not registered with the state, it's uh, Oklahoma, for example, super easy. I can just set up as many series as I want. Oklahoma doesn't care or know about it. They just know about the parent. That's all FinCEN is going to know about too. The tree. So I, I, that's my first response. The second one that's kind of weird though, is you know, we get an EIN for the subs. Yeah. Because the subs have to have their own bank account. Yep. And they have to have their own name. So I got 
five accounts at the IRS with EINs, but they're all under one parent. FinCEN might go, whoa, whoa, whoa. You, you, you know, Hold you got on. all these entities. <laughs> What's going on? Oh, that's part of my series LLC. And I think you're going to be able to show common ownership. Yeah, And you don't get the subsidiary exemption because the, the parent has to be exempt for the subsidiary exemption to apply. So I think if the parent, you report the parent and you get a nasty letter, you go common ownership, all these are subs, I walk away. That's what we think. So this is still getting embedded. Yeah. And for those of you that are wondering, what's a series LLC? I've never <laughs> heard of that before. Um, as you start to invest you might look into series llc's or you might start to hear about them on youtube conferences what it does is it saves a lot of taxpayers additional filing fees when it comes to filing their tax return additional tax return forms and you're essentially having little sub series llc's underneath this one llc and they call it a series llc so imagine investing in las vegas and you have five or six properties out there as opposed to setting up five or six separate LLCs, you might choose to set up a Nevada series LLC, one series LLC that holds each of those properties in their own subseries underneath that one LLC. So that is an option that you have as an investor if the state that you're currently investing in allows for series LLCs. Great explanation. And I loved your last sentence. If the state where you're investing allows for it, there's about 15 states. I think it's 17 or 18 now. I try to update my data on it constantly. There's about 17 or 18 states that have this, but you can yeah. only do it in the state where your rentals are and they have the law. So don't get too excited for you people in non-serious states. I bet there's at least one or two therapists out there. They're like, oh, well, I have a PLLC. So maybe I'm, I'm exempt from this situation. And I would encourage you to think again. If yeah. you have a PLLC, it's very similar to an LLC. It's just a professional LLC. And for many of my doctors and um, physicians out there that have to set up a PLLC and then they tax them as S corporations, those two have to be reported. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And I'm a PC, professional corp. So you've got LPs, LLPs, triple LPs, PLLCs, LCs, uh, inks, anything like that. You're reporting people. Yeah. Here are some of the exemptions to the CTA that maybe you got some of you guys have been wondering. Uh, believe it or not, banks are exempt from the CTA. <laughs> Credit unions, securities, brokers, dealers are excluded from the CTA. Investment companies are excluded from the CTA. Insurance companies are excluded from the CTA. Accounting firms are excluded from the CTA. And we already cover 501c3 and there's about 10 or 15 more that are kind of uh, more boring type of businesses, financial market utilities, pooled investment vehicles, tax exempt entities like 501c3s. Um, but those are some of the big ones that uh, Mark and I wanted to share with you guys. So if you're in any of those type of entities, um, again, you already have, have high scrutiny um, by the federal agencies. And that's part of the reason why um, you don't have to uh, report to the CTA. You are already reporting to the government at a different yeah. level. Yeah, yep, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh man. So <sighs> talk to me a little bit about where the state of business is at for uh, entrepreneurs right now when it comes to year end. Cause I know that we have the tax and legal summit coming up. I'm going to be speaking at the tax and legal summit. And my intentions for being there is to try to provide as much tax information to business owners, real estate investors before the end of the year so they can reduce their tax bill. But tell me why you decided to start the tax and legal summit. And is there still tickets available? Can people still sign up for it? Yes. In, in person, uh, we still have about 20 oh, ish in person tickets. I know that sounds like, a, <laughs> like I'm trying to create some urgency here that uh, that's fabricated. No, we literally only have about 20 seats left. It's going to be a over 350 person conference in Phoenix in right. a couple of weeks. It's November 30th, December 1st and 2nd. Check this out, everybody. 30 breakout sessions with 20 speakers uh, with the credentials like Carlton here, huge, uh, 20 speakers, 30 breakout sessions, five main stage events, two panels, denim and diamonds party Friday night. Oh my gosh. With line dancing, it's going to rock. You get all these accountants and attorneys and business owners cutting loose. It's going to be crazy. Uh, so we got this, this big party is going to be fun. And I, I just wanted a place where professionals can interact with business owners. 
I want to create a place where they're mingling. This is like, you know, mingle.com. I really want everybody together and you can find a good tax advisor, find a good lawyer, whatever, and meet business owners. We got great vendors, um, great food and fun and lunches, very affordable, just a general admission tickets, 500 bucks. For three days online, it's got a virtual ticket. We'll have unlimited virtual tickets. Those are available too. And I, I, I'm going to say it now. I've, I've got to give Carlton a coupon code for all of his peeps. So for all of you that want to go, you can get a discount. I think, I think it's Carlton 15. It'll be down in the description, people. There we go. It's going to be good. You've got to come for Carlton section. And that's for 15% off, right? They'll get 15% yep, yes, sir. off. Oh, awesome. All right. Yep. So the codes Carlton 15 will, oh, we already posted it there in the, thank you team. Members. Wow. Um, I would encourage you guys to join the tax and legal 360 summit. This is an opportunity for you to find who your next tax strategist or tax professional could be, but it's also a chance for you to come learn from some tax experts who are very skilled in tax law. This is a two, three day conference. And like Mark said, there's going to be a tons of breakouts. If you've had questions around placing children on payroll, using the short term rental strategy, qualifying a spouse as a real estate professional, uh, deferred compensation plan, cash balance plans, defined benefit plans. We're probably not going to hold back any of the strategies that we've learned, and we're just going to unleash it over these three days. So if you're not able to attend in person, I would encourage you to at least get the virtual ticket. Uh, so that way you have access to this information heading into 2024. Yeah. And, it, and it's not just about saving taxes. We have a, a panel of alt investment experts. We've got a couple of folks on that panel that have hundred million dollar Roth IRAs, people that have created wealth in their retirement accounts that's tax free for the rest of their lives. We, we're going to be talking about building wealth, estate planning, asset protection. This is tax and legal 360. So people, as you're trying to build your legacy and trying to build wealth, you can't do it without the tax and legal. You can't. Yeah. Successful people do this. And so it, it's just, I want it to be the biggest conference in America in this space. And uh, we we have doubled size from our last one in the summer. And it's it's only growing uh, leaps and bounds. So it's going to be good. Plus, I will be there. Teaching. Damn straight. And you guys who have always <laughs> wanted to, you know, see me and Mark uh, together, we'll be uh, rocking the stage together. So would love for you guys to come out there. Before we kind of shift gears here, Mark, because I know that there's one person out there that's thinking, well, they did say that trusts are exempt, so I'm just going to transfer everything to my trust now. What's the downside to just having everything operating inside of a trust, just only having your investment properties inside of a trust, no LLCs, um, and choosing to just operate like that as opposed to creating that separate layer? Yeah, yeah. Well, because some people think that that's asset protection for them is just having a trust. Yeah. yeah. Well, first, I, I, I'd say that all of you should have a trust. I want everything you own to ultimately go into your revocable living trust. That's the trifecta. I want my assets, my operations, to everything go down to my trust at the end of the day. And that's a revocable living trust that doesn't pay any extra tax, doesn't report to the CTA, doesn't have to do a tax return, but it's your legacy and your future and it's privacy and it's estate planning and it's so important. But between you and that rental, three steps away, if you just have a trust there, there's no protection. Mm. Well, I'm going to do an irrevocable trust, Mark. And, you know, this asset protection trust I paid 15 grand from, from this scam artist, blah, blah, blah. I don't, you know, now you're paying taxes for an irrevocable trust. And, oh my gosh, it opens up such a nightmare, of, a cascading of events. So I think the message is, everybody, I'm still a huge advocate of having a trust at the bottom, but let's use those LLCs much more wisely. This is going to force everybody to just think of, take a second thought and just not haphazardly go on legal zoom, just set stuff up thinking, Oh, it's okay. I'm just going to throw out, I'm just going to throw LLCs at it. And, and no, no, we're going to be more organized. I would agree with you, man. Anything else that you want to cover about this BOI report, what has to go on it? Um, and when does it need to be submitted as we head into 2024? So everyone is aware. Yeah. Oh, and I did. Okay. So I didn't talk about the third group for any new entities oh, being right. created after yes, January 1st. So any of you creating a new entity next year, so we're gonna clean your house, you know, clean up the mess, get rid of entities you don't need, get those reported, boom, 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 and then get them on a maintenance plan. So your state filing, your FinCEN reporting, all that is handled and taken care of, get your minutes done, all those goodies. But if you set up a new entity, which our clients are gonna be doing, we're gonna set up new entities next year, you have 90 days to report the same BOI. 
So when you set up a new company, uh, you're going to, that report will be filed. And I, I know this sounds crazy, but at our law firm, our prices didn't change. We're going to include it with the entity setup that we're already doing now for you. And it's going to be given to you in your bank packet. So when you go to the bank to open your bank account, I swear banks are going to be asking for your BOI. They want to see it because they don't need Finson breathing down their neck. Who do you, Finson's trying to stop money laundering. Do you know who they're talking to is the banks. Yep. So if you've got an EIN registered at a bank for a bank account, they're going to be sharing that with FinCEN too. And you, you check the box when you open a bank account now that is shared with the federal government. FinCEN is already tracking you with a social when you set up a business account under an EIN. They're already there. You just didn't know it. So, so when you go to go open your bank account, we want to give you your articles, your SS4 and EIN, your BOI, bank loves you. Done. Has to be done within 90 days or 500 a day. Two years in jail. <laughs> I, love, I love how you put that at the end. Or two years in jail. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or two years in jail. I just or, don't look good in orange, Mark. Like, yeah, I know. Don't colors. I don't have any orange in my closet. And Carlton's not going to be in a jumpsuit anytime soon. So no. all of my clients are going to get their BOI reports done. I know all your clients are going to get those BOI reports done. But for somebody that's out there that's like, oh, this inspired me. I want to set up an LLC. Maybe I'll just go run off to Delaware or Nevada or one of these states that I, that Mark and Carlton talk about so often. What would you say to that person right now that's just thinking, maybe I'll just go open up an entity in one of these states like Nevada or, or Wyoming? How would you caution them? Well, this is a, a, a regular message of yours and mine, Carlton, for those that follow both of us, that you, you really want to always think twice before you just go set up a new entity. There's a lot of fly-by-night companies that are setting up these Wyoming entities for privacy and asset protection, and clients don't even need them. We just did a show this week on our podcast with the number one legal scam in America is people setting up good things, but not, but not needing them. Yep. They're just buying stuff because some influencer told them and they don't even need it. Yep. And so, uh, you, you, you may need a Wyoming entity. You may need a Delaware entity, but talk to a freaking lawyer or asset protection or tax advisor that has the skills to walk you through the pros and cons. Yeah. So. I remember, Mark, when I was younger and I before I became a tax professional, before I even wanted to become a tax professional, I went to the Apartment Owners Association out in Los Angeles and I was listening to all these presentations. And then um Eventually, my mom hired me to work inside of her firm, and I was doing sales calls, and we had this person come into the office, and they came in, and they were just starting their business, but they had already set up all these corporate structures. They had a C corporation. They had a land trust. They had a business <sighs> complex trust, a irrevocable trust, and they oh had my spent $80,000 on setting up all of these different complex trusts because they were told – that they would never have to pay taxes ever if they just knew how to utilize and move money between trusts and continue to do that. What would you say to somebody that has heard something like that? Because it comes across my office still to this day. Yep. You know, I heard about this. If I just have this trust, then move the assets over to this trust and then loan money back over to this trust. What do you say to someone that wants to do all these games? Well, uh, if, if it sounds too good to be true, it usually is, folks. Mm. And... I've never charged a client. I love to charge clients. <laughs> I'm a lawyer for crying out loud. I'm a dirty, rotten, you know, whatever. I, I mean, but I have never, I, I, I can't remember the last client I charged for a restructuring of more than $10,000. I can't even remember that. Like these companies that are charging these complex trust crap things that are so darn expensive. I would just say, get a second opinion from someone that's not selling it. That has a fiduciary duty to do what's best for you. Um, uh, uh, the other thing I would say too is it is it that's the extreme example, and so many of you are hearing this. Please, if you're in that type of structure, it's sooner you get, get out of it, the better, and just lick your wounds. I'm so sorry, <laughs> but but I had a consult two days ago. I so, as some clients um, I met with personally had four LLCs, no business, no rentals, and they thought. Well, I had to have these four LLCs to build wealth. Someone told me, and I had to have them before I could do anything. And I had to have, I'm like, no. And the people selling this are not lawyers or CPAs or account that have a fiduciary duty to help them. They're yeah. just these fly-by-night companies and people are getting taken advantage of. And so please, please be careful. 
I agree. Hold them. <laughs> Guys, you have to protect yourselves out there. And I see it all the time where we run across other professionals that have educated our clients on establishing all these corporate entity structures that they just don't need yet. Or maybe you're a business owner and you learn about LLCs off of, you know, YouTube University, and you have all of these intentions to start all of these different businesses. So you go on LegalZoom or one of these online platforms and you set up an LLC for every business that you would want to start. I think I'm going to do day trading. I think I'm going to do drop shipping. I think I'm going to become a real estate investor. I think I'm going to also own my own clothing brand. And you get on the phone with some of us and we find out, well, you haven't actually started any of these companies, but now we have to figure out how to file the tax return for all these entities. You're <laughs> going to have to pay the state filing fees for all these entities. And you know what that ends up doing? What I see, Mark? It ends up discourage, discouraging you from even getting started on one of these businesses because you've already dug yourself into a hole with accounting fees. So if yeah. you're watching this right now, I would encourage you to take the correct steps towards becoming a business owner, an entrepreneur, and start off with the end goal in mind. What is the end goal for you wanting to start this business? Are you going to become a successful day trader? Okay, well, go all in on that. Maybe you are interested in doing e-commerce, right? Well, go all in on that. But don't set up all of these different entities or all these different LLCs and say that I'm going to wear five different business owner hats if you haven't even made income in any of these businesses or you haven't even gotten started. Yeah, yeah. Great advice. Great advice. Well, people, the American dream is real. It, it really is. You shouldn't be discouraged. And don't take away from this CTA reporting that all is, you know, the sky's falling. It's not. It, it's just it's just like doing your state filing. You just got to take care of it. Have a resource. Uh, clients of Carlton, you're going to be get taken care of. Our clients are going to take care of, and we're out there trying to spread the good word to these other 43 million whatever you know LLCs that we're here for them. So uh, make sure you tell your friends that help educate them. But um, Carlton, thanks for having me here. You're awesome. I sure appreciate your message and your Absolutely. style and your charisma and the way you relate to people. We're, there's so many Americans starving for it, and you do such a great job. I appreciate you being on, Mark. We definitely have to have you on soon. As we head into the new year, we'll be bringing Mark back on. As we jump into 2024, we could be seeing some changes in the interest rates. We could have some more new first-time real estate investors. And if you're out there right now and you're thinking, hey, I want real estate to be a part of my portfolio, a part of my legacy, and a part of my tax planning, then we'll be providing you guys information as we head into 2024 to have you best equipped. Mark, thank you so much for joining us here today. Look forward Thanks to having for having me. On. See you in Phoenix. <laughs> See you out there. All right, guys, thank you guys so much for joining us today on today's live. If you haven't already, go ahead and drop and click on the link below and enter the code Carlton15 to get your virtual or your in-person ticket to the Tax and Legal Summit 360. I will be speaking there. There will be a lot of other professionals who I've, quite frankly, have learned from outside of Mark II that will be there speaking on stage. So I'm actually really excited to network with these other tax professionals and entrepreneurs, and I'm looking forward to seeing all of you guys there. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. You guys know what to do. Like, comment, subscribe. We'll see you guys on the next one. Take care.